everyone, welcome to my floss tube channel. I'm Deanne from Newfoundland, Canada, and this is Stitching on the Rock. <laughs> my Vanna moment. I, it's still too big. I have to bring another one. <laughs> anyway, I keep forgetting to tell what episode it is, so I thought I'd get a board. It's episode 25. Um, it's been a crappy week. Yeah. Aaron's wonderful two month start of school kind of imploded on. Thursday, uh, no, Wednesday, they had their uh, Remembrance Day and said, well, he did too well. So he was home on Thursday to kind of decompress, and then he's staying home tomorrow, Monday, because uh, Friday was a holiday, and they were trying to get a program in, in sorted out for him, and this has been an issue, and I'm not going to get into the details of the issues, because I'll just start crying, um, but it's been going on for a couple of years, and... Um, the last two years it's been impossible to get things straightened out because of all the restrictions of going into the school and all that but it's something that has to be dealt with and it has to be dealt with now so they're trying between Thursday and tomorrow get a plan in place and then we have to meet with the school sometime this week and hopefully things will get back on track because he was doing wonderfully up until then um, and I homeschooled him sort of on Thursday based on what his uh, teacher sent and same thing tomorrow and here comes Kitty um, she was asleep I thought we could get away with a video without interrupting but nope <laughs> anyway besides that issue um, oh I got to go for my first boob squeeze which was fun I guess I'm at that age um, and I had to get my winter tires put on and that's never a fun thing because it means snow is coming um, I did get my hair cut. I do need my roots touched up, so don't look too closely. Um, and I guess the highlight was my sister and I went for lunch yesterday. First time I'd been out anywhere for a restaurant to eat in months. Uh, we went to Pizza Delight, which I don't know if it's just a Newfoundland place or if it's in Atlanta, Canada, but they had the best barbecue chicken nachos. I'm not a big nacho fan. I don't like olives. I don't like onions. I'm not a lover of salsa. But with barbecue sauce, I love them. It's my favorite thing to eat there. Yeah, so that's pretty much what's been going on with life. Fun! <laughs> and now in the stitching that Kitty is now lying on top of. So, um, first of all, I'll say welcome again. <laughs> I don't know if I said that at the beginning. Um, and thank you to, I've had a few new subscribers. And um, I'm getting trickling up to 500 and I had a couple of things that I was going to say thank you to when I got to 500 so if you're watching subscribe you never know you might get something out of it um I've been watching Flosstube quite a bit I finally rolled around to uh, Darlene Dion Designs Flosstube and you know I love her designs I've stitched a couple of them and I have a couple more in my stash and I have all the rest of them in my favorites on Etsy. Uh, so I finally got through all of her videos and they were great. Um, she's in Nova Scotia. Oh, speaking of Darlene, if you're watching and any other Nova Scotians that you're watching, you can see that I kind of, I got rid of my fall stuff and this is what I call winter. So it's snowman stuff and stuff like that. But my boxes, which I love and I've had for 16 or 17 years, um, botanist or Nova Scotian. I was trying to remember the name of it and it's probably long gone. But I do remember that they had a store in Bedford in the shopping center that has Pete's Fruitique in it. I can't remember the name of the shopping center. And I think they had another store somewhere else in one of the other malls or maybe down in the valley. I can't remember. Um, but it was all like country, kitschy, that kind of stuff. And I cannot remember the name of the store. So I was trying to remember the other day when I was talking about them to someone. Um, but... Maybe one of you guys in Nova Scotia will remember the store I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what's been going on. Anyway, um, sorry kitty. Notes, need my notes. Um, oh, the other floss tuber that I've moved on to since I've finished watching all of Darlene's up to her most current one is at Mouse Potato Designs. And she makes me laugh. I laugh at every video she does. I, don't, I just, she's funny to me. And uh, I'm, I don't know, 10 or 12 into her floss tube. She's also done a lot of paper crafting 
uh, journaling videos before she got into floss tube. She's only been doing floss tube and stitching for probably a little over a year. Um, and I paper craft, and I, but I've never gotten into journaling. But she has posted pictures on her Instagram of her cross stitch diary journal calendar, whatever you want to call it. And I just love how she does it. And I'm going to try in January. I'm not one to keep up with things. Like I start and I do a really good start for about the first three weeks and then I peters off. But I'm going to try. I really want to do what she's doing because she adds pictures of her cross stitches as she finishes. And I really think it's cool. So I will link Darlene and Oh gosh, I can't think of her name, but Mouse Potato Designs down below. Um, and yeah, that's about it of what's been going on. Got a lot of Christmas shopping completed so far. I hate the December crowds, so I try to get them done at least by the first or second week in December so I don't have to deal with those people who forget that Christmas is on December 25th every year. Um, when Aaron got his school post, that's the other thing in life, my sister looked at him and said, find me the person whose grade 10 school picture looks amazing. Because you know they're all hair stuck off everywhere and pimples all over the face and his body is too tall for it. And yeah, but there with there. <laughs> and yeah, okay, stitching. I promise, now we're moving on to stitching as soon as I can get Miss Kitty to move. Excuse me, uh, don't mean to make you guys sick, but here's my stitching all under that body. So we might have a few meows as I try to push her off. <laughs> At least she's not drinking my water like I watch Helen D, and I love Helen D. And I want a uh, gift from Helen D, a uh, uh, draw. It's not here yet. I'll share it when it comes. But her cat, she has her glass of water and her cat drinks out of her glass of water almost every video. Um, Kitty doesn't do that, but she does like to lie on my stuff. Come on. I know. I know. There you go. I'm sorry. So, stitching. I'm calling this show and tell because I... <laughs> My mom called me twice in the last week, Deanne, I was cleaning out this closet and I found this cross stitch. Uh, Deanne, I've cleaned up this cupboard in the kitchen and I found this cross stitch. So I've got a couple of things to show you that one, I knew a stitch years and years and years ago. The other one, I don't even remember stitching. Uh, but up first are my finishes. I have two finishes. I have two fully finishes. I have three widths. And I have two surprises and a previous finish. So I've got lots of stitching and a little and some purchases. So my Santas. Oh, I should tell you guys, and this may be a long video because I'm going to ramble on and go off on tangents and all that. Uh, anyone who's new here uh, or new in the last couple of videos will see Santas. I'm doing seven Santa ornaments for my son Aaron's uh, assistants and teachers in school. Don't know why I came up with that idea. I just love a challenge. Um, and you may think that Santas are all I stitch, but my normal stitching is very eclectic. Um, I have full coverage heads, I have cute little ornaments, and I have everything in between. Um, my stitching style is sort of like my taste of music. You know, a friend of mine said, Normally, you listen to someone's Spotify list or whatever playlist, and you can learn pe stuff about people. Not you, Deanne. <laughs> because my list consists of oh, Garth Brooks, next to Guns N' Roses, next to George Jones, next to Selena Gomez, next to Great Big C. I have a very eclectic taste in music, and I have a very eclectic taste in Stitching. I'll try not to wave my hands around too much. <laughs> so you won't learn a lot about my stitching taste by watching the last three or four videos because I'm sanctified. Um, but I have probably a month to get two more finished and then fully finish all seven. So that's where I am. So Santa number, and I knew when I was picked seven Santas to do that I would hit the brick wall. Meet my brick wall. <laughs> 
Uh, they say don't cover up your face, which I know I've been doing a lot lately. This is Santa. Well, it's number. These are all by My Fanning Designs on Etsy, and this is Santa number twelve on her list of how she designed them, and it was my fifth. And uh, he's got three little squirrels, one on his hat and two down by his feet. And I got to probably about uh, halfway through the squirrels, like because I kind of did it top to bottom, um, and got over to the tail here and realized, if you can see there, or no, sorry, got to his head, I guess. I don't know, you see that there's a tree here. I realized I had left out a row in the tree. So I had to frog everything up to about there of what I had done. And then I went and threw it across the floor and said, no more Santas. I can't. So I <laughs> persevered and got through it. Um, and it's a, and you will see what it did to the next one, which I should have had done by now. I had two done in my last video. I should have had two done for this video. I stitched maybe 25 stitches because I needed a break from the Santas. Anyway, let's put my piece of paper and hopefully you will be able to see him. Here he is. Sorry about all the wrinkles. I I rinsed them all just to make sure. But I'm ironing. I don't know if it's my iron or I just need to spritz them and iron them again. But anyway, that will I'll deal with that when I get around to finishing them all. So here he is. I left out. There's three little falling leaves, um, which didn't really make sense to me for Santa. So I left those out. And he, I really like them all. And I can't wait to stitch them off for myself. I'm going to do all 12 or 13 or 14, however many Santas. Well, no, I'm going to leave out the dog one because there's one with dogs. And we have a cat, obviously, as you saw. Um, and my other finish was my car project for taking to school with Aaron. And I don't have the pattern with me, but it's from Melissa on Pinkerin Pumpkin um, Quilts blog. And she has tons and tons of freebies there. I'm sure most of you know all about her. But this one is called Tulip House. And there it is. And there was a, um, like a quilt star up there and a little heart by the side here. But I left both of those out. And I'm gonna turn this one into a pillow. Uh, not yet, after Christmas, because I'm getting this sewing machine for Christmas. <laughs> from my mom and my sister because my, my mom gives me money every year and says go buy something you want and my sister said um, what do you want and I said well I don't really need anything I said I want a sewing machine and she said well I was going to probably give you a gift card because I don't really need any whatever I need I go and buy myself so I said well instead of doing that just give me whatever you were going to give me um, you know the value of the gift card in money and I'll put it with the money from my mom and I'll go and get a sewing machine and I got it at Canadian Tire, um, which is, for those of you not in Canada, I, well, they sell tires because it's called Canadian Tire, but it's an automotive, um, hardware, home goods, whatever kind of store, department store. Um, and they actually sell, sell Singer sewing machines. Um, so I put it, all of their money together and, uh, I have a, credit card from the store so it built up dollars for the store so I ended up having to pay I think six dollars over what between their money and what I had in the Canadian Tire money which wasn't a whole lot I spent six dollars on the machine which was great um it's sitting here in my house and I really want to open it but I gotta be good or I could just tape up the box again <laughs> I'll never know but they won't see the sewing machine because I have a tiny house. So I'm being good. But anyway. <laughs> Not with that tangent. This will be a pillow in the new year. When I don't have to hand sew it like I did my little ones for Halloween and, and uh, fall ones. And those are my finishes. Yay. Um, so my, I'll keep going with what I'm stitching on rather than introduce you to, to new stuff. So this is sent to number six for me, which is number nine of her collection. And he has bunnies with him. I will probably be leaving out the two carrots that are here. Because, yeah. 
I don't really get the dangly random things. Uh, and stitching with the housewives, the Priscilla and Chelsea, they do a lot of that just kind of dangly stuff. But I, just, I like my stitching clean, neat. I don't know. Anyway, this is what I have done. Which you may not even be able to see. It's his beard. It's the tail of his beard, the curl in his beard. And that's what I got done this morning to say I officially started it. But uh, I'll be able to whip that up in two or three days after Aaron goes back to school. Uh, that will get done pretty quickly. I'm just going to move you guys. Sorry. Sorry. I feel like the, my stand was falling off the table. Um, so, like I said, in between the Santas, if you watched my last video, I was stitching on one of my hands because they have been lacking in attention and I said I picked one which was the uh, quick stitch pride and prejudice by Amy Stewart this one I'm put it up close because it's really hard to see in the picture which of course is part of our I think it's called heroes and heroines but don't quote me on that um, and my goal was to reach the 5% point <laughs> because it's uh, uh, very tedious doing it one over one. Oh, I didn't even tell you guys that the the sandals are done one, uh, two over two on a 28 count linen that I dyed with pearl gray uh, rip dye and the tulip house was done two over two on a 28 count linen that I didn't dye <laughs> and they were the, that one was just a scrap but the other ones I bought at Michael's and dyed because money on gifts. Anyway, the Bride and Bride to this is done one over one on 28 count ice blue and I'm doing it diagonally and I since my last video I have done oops, sorry, lost my lost my note page uh, 1072 stitches and I'm at 4.93% I went straight down the diagonal, kind of picking colors, and I miscounted in one spot, so I had to frog some. And then I said, shoot, and I'll <laughs> um, go up at the top and I'll start filling in because I was leaving out all my confetti stitches and that. So that's what I've been doing, and that's why it's taking so long to get to the 5% because one stitch here and three stitches there, and yeah. Let me fold this so you guys can see it. And here we are. This is where I am. Although I do have, whoop, let me hold it up so you guys can see. Although I do have a little bit down here, but I'm probably going to have to frog that anyway. And so I have got everything filled in from the top left corner. Down the diagonal, and there you can see Darcy's arm. That's Darcy's arm. And you can see the little ruffle right there on his cuff. And this is Elizabeth. From what I can tell. <laughs> so let me just hold it up again so you can see. And I'll point out where I am. So I started up here. Oh, hang on. Let me see. This cheek is so wrinkled up. Uh, I'm not one of these people to put it in a sleeve and keep it nice and neat. It goes in the bag. So I started up here and I came through this blue book and through this orangey brown book and through this blue book and Darcy's arm. And now I'm about right here with Elizabeth. And it's been a lot of fun watching it come together. But it's not fun doing this one and two and five and and back to three and one and yeah but it's coming along great but I should have it the five percent done this week excuse me I need a drink oh Miss Kitty my stand was in a bag because Aaron had to do a video reading of a children's book for his English class and he did that as dad so I gave him this for the recording, and he brought it back in a bag, and that's on the floor there, so <laughs> she found it, 
Tori. <laughs> we are all over the place. And now the sun has come out. We had buckets and buckets of rain last night and yesterday. And I pity the poor guy that changed my tires yesterday because um, my mom is in a condo building and her and a couple other people there have, there's a mobile tire changing truck and they hire that to come so they can sit in their house while their tires get changed and I go down there and get that done and he did it yesterday and he was out in the pouring rain he didn't finish <clears throat> excuse me at mom he came about I guess about one-ish and he didn't finish till after three and he had more to do and he was sobbed oh I felt so bad for him I hope he's not sick today but now we have the sun up and it's just gonna throw everything off so I took out, I said that I need to spend an extra day on my Ornamental Joy by uh, Country Cottage Needleworks. This one. Ooh. Now we're going to have fun trying to get you guys to see stuff with the sun. I hope you can see it. Um, this is my Christmas design. Because <laughs> I won't have any Christmas for myself this year because I'm doing Santa's. <laughs> Uh, and I don't think I want to see another Santa after I get seventh one done. Um, so I've been doing this for the last four or five months on this 24th and 25th. Uh, but I'm going to need an extra couple of days, I think, to finish it. So I, um, after the Santa debacle, I, act, and I did some work on, um, no, actually I did this before I worked on the Pride and Prejudice one. I took this out for a day and... This is done on 28 count, and I think it was called Ivory um, Lugana, that I then dyed a tan, because I wanted a bit more antique looking, or older looking fabric. And this is where I am now. So the last time I had the joy and the bows and the stems or branches or whatever you want to call it, threads, whatever they're hanging from, done. And I had just put in a couple of, uh, a row of stitches on the green ornament on this side, and I had a row of stitches on this ornament. So since then, I have finished the two ornaments on this side, done their bows, done their strings, stems, whatever, and all the snowflakes. There. I have very little fabric to finish on the side, I realize, but it, I should be able to get it done on what I have in mind for doing it. So this month, obviously, I need to at least try to get the ornaments and that done on this side. And then once the centers are all done, I'll do the uh, I'll do the design on the top and on the bottom. And I should have it all finished for Christmas. At least I can go. And I will have one Christmas cross stitch completed this year. Um, We'll see. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I will be able to get it done, no problem. Um, and now, since I um, finished Tulip House, which was my car project when I went to pick up Aaron, and uh, that is done, so I need another one. So I haven't done anything on this because I fi only finished that one on Thursday. Yeah, well, Wednesday when I got Aaron, I finished it. Um, I picked out uh, Mom by stitching with the housewives, which I had started and gave it to my mother um, this year for uh, her birthday in June. But we came to, I ran out of uh, the B5200 and I came down with COVID and couldn't get any. I went looking for it before I got sick and couldn't. The, the two Michaels and Fabricville and the only one places that have thread here and I couldn't find it anywhere uh, and then I got COVID and so I couldn't go looking again and so we ran out of time I ran out of time for a birthday so I said I'll do it for for either Mother's Day or her birthday this year and I'm just trying to figure out how it goes it goes like that so that's where I am I have the mug finished so now I'll start uh, working on the uh, rest of the design next week.
and that. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're there, uh, is what I've been doing stitching wise. Now comes all the other stuff. This is the show and tell stuff. I'll do my one purchase first because um, it's only one. Well, besides the Santas that I've been buying. Um, I got ordered some more thread from Brin and Needle, which is my lo only local cross stitch supply store of anything. And I had their card and just give me one second to, or is it here? No. Let me stand. Sorry. I thought it was there. Anyway, I'll show you their front of their Brin and Needle, and they are a local Newfoundland hand dye thread and a fabric company. And they are now I have no details because I just read it on their Facebook group, but they have a Facebook group called Brin and Needle that they are coming out with a thread club and possibly a fabric club starting in January. And that's all I can tell you, but if you want to follow them on Instagram or, and follow them on Facebook, join the Facebook group. When they have more information, I'm sure they'll post it and I'm looking forward to it because I love their thread. I'm only doing one project with it right now, but I uh, plan to look for some stuff to use their thread. So I bought three more threads, so that will give me nine of their threads. Um, there is Midgey more expensive, but I know getting supplies here in Newfoundland costs more than it does anywhere else. So I understand the uh, extra cost in their in their uh, th their you know they have to pay for what their supplies cost and all that. So I understand that. But here in St. John's, there in St. John's, I get my thread in four or five days. You know. Which I really like <laughs> ordering from Ontario or Alberta. I have to wait weeks for it. So they were kind enough to add a fourth one in for me. And those 500 subscribers that I'm looking for, you may get to enjoy that one. Um, once again, beautiful thread. But anyway, I'll show you what I bought. So I bought this one. Oh, let me see if I can get my white behind it so you can see it. And this one. Oh my god, isn't it gorgeous? It's called Land and Sea. And I have to find something to stitch using that. Hopefully you can see it. I'll bring it in closer so you can get a really good look at how it goes from like green green up here all the way down through turquoise and right down to like an aqua. Oh, I just love it. This one, which is called Turnt, which is this kind of olivey green, like army, well, not really army green, but really pretty green. That one is more a solid color, but it's still really pretty. And I ordered Hagstone. Which is, I don't, it, this one will be difficult for you to see all the coloring in it. It's got a really, really pale gray. It's got like eggplant purple. It's got that same kind of, the same kind of green color in it. Oh, it's gorgeous. But I don't know how well you can see the color. Because some of it is very subtle. Let's see if I can, I'll focus. Uh, are we focusing? Wow. She said, wow. And the one they sent me, which I said might become part of my 500. I don't even know if I'm going to give it up. But we will see. It is wild and crazy. It's called... Oh, sorry for going to the camera. It's called Beltane. Which I know has something to do with... Salsas, salt of the moons, and uh, I know I know the word, but don't ask me to explain it to you. It's got a very like a blue gray base, and then there's all these little greens and yellows and reds and blues. And oh my goodness, let me see. 
Are we getting it? I don't know. It is so cool. So cool. And I, like a, I can see like a, a, a sampler done with this because you just get the little hints of color through your stick, you know? Very, very cool. Anyway, so that's Brennan Needle. They have a website. They have a Facebook group. Is it focusing? Can you, read, can you see it? It's B-R-I-N with the emphasis and N-E-D-L-E. -E. In case it's not coming out because I'm my eyesight is terrible, so I can't even tell if it's focusing on it. Um, like I said, they have a website, they have Instagram, they have a Facebook group, they have a thread club coming, floss club coming, and uh, they said possibly a fabric club coming this year, next year. In the new year, you know what I mean. But I'm definitely joining the thread club. Floss, whatever. Okay, <laughs> it's it's a wild and wacky day. Fully finishes. Now one of these you had seen before, but I had fully finished it, but not fully fully finished it. They're both winter, and I finished one of them in like June. So. Uh, this one, Waiting for Santa by Bank Creek. And here it is. Oh, it's just, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, the board came from Michael's, which I had it on before, but I had just like brush strokes of white. I didn't really like that after I looked at it. So I kind of whitewashed the board. And I know you can get them in white, but then they're solid white. I like the more rustic look of it. Um, the fabric you saw before, which was just something I got, it's got snowflakes. You'll see more of it on the other one because I use the same fabric. Um, this I had for years and years and years, this Waiting for Santa pattern. I got it when we lived in, in uh, Nova Scotia, um, which was 16 years ago. We left Nova Scotia and came home. We were there for about three years. Um, so I've had this forever. It's done with all the gentle art call for thread um, and it's done on a hand dyed that I probably picked up there in a store or bought online at ABC Stitch or something like that. Like I said, it's been years since I had it and uh, for those of you who don't know, I, I've been cross stitching for about 30-ish years and but about 20 years ago I got into scrapbooking and uh, cross stitch kind of Went off to the side. I do it occasionally, but nothing uh, big. And I got into, I bought a few Hades when they first came out and I heard about them and started, and, well, I don't even know if I started either one. And then I kind of drifted away from it and I hurt my shoulder two years ago at Christmas. Um, and I couldn't even lift my arm above about there without pain. And after physiotherapy and, and uh, massage therapy, I decided I wanted to get back into cross stitching. And in the last year, basically, since I started my floss tube, probably, well, it'll be a year in the middle of January, I've really gotten back into it and gotten, gotten a bit crazy over it. And started watching all these floss tubers and said, you know, that might help me, motivate me to do some stitching. So here we are. Anyway, the fab, the ribbon for the bow came from Michaels, and this is part of a long stem of, of things from Dollarama. And so this, waiting for Santa, completely finished. Uh, inspir inspired by Priscilla and Chelsea from The Real Housewives and Christy from Java Girl Stitches. Just, ooh, I'll lay it down there. I'm sorry, I gotta reach over for the other one. <clears throat> and this one you've all seen Snowman, um, which I finished a couple months ago. And now that I, like I said, I can finish it. And I kind of did a, went outside the box and turned this like a, on its side so it was, you could see more of the fabric. And I'm like, oh, I think it's cool to do it. Not always having to have everything one behind the other. So you can see the fabric more and did the same thing with the board, kind of whitewashed it. And the ribbon is 
from Michaels and the pick is from same kind of same part of the same pick from Dollarama and another little wooden snow like snowbag stuff in there. So there you go. I really like them. And they're part of my snow decoration. One of them was here and the other one was in my living room. And now on to the I guess previous finishes because oh sorry. I gotta move. Or it's gonna fall. Okay. Having fun? <laughs> <laughs> this is oh, this is gonna be a hot mess. <laughs> yeah. This instead of saying hot mama I should say hot mess. <laughs> Uh, so, number one of what my mom called and said, Deanna, I found this. When I started, uh, well, my nephews, one of the first things I did was a birth certificate, a birth announcement thing for them, they're twins, and they were born in 90. What does that make them? 32? So I started 32 years ago. This was probably one of the first things I did. Um... <clears throat> popcorn <laughs> and it's on a jar lid and it's as bumpy around the edges as it could possibly be <laughs> and I said I was going to take it apart and try and make it more presentable and a couple of my friends on Facebook said oh no don't take it apart that's part of your journey and cross stitch but I get the heebie jeebies every time I look at all the bumps but I don't know if it would ever come across and be presentable I'm sure it's out of a magazine um, don't know which one, <laughs> but I know it's out of a magazine. Um, could be Cross Stitch and Country Crafts, or it could be, um, I don't know, one of the other ones that were around in the 80s. <clears throat> and the other one, I know exactly what it is, and I'm like, oh, I don't remember stitching that. How, when did I stitch that? And this was back when I started in the center, and look at all the fabric I wasted. It's summer row, but oh, I'm gonna cover up my face if I do that. <laughs> I'll fold all the fabric down. It's summer row by uh, Bent Creek. And um, yeah, I have enough fabric. If I had done this the way it was, I should have done it, which was to start like three inches down. I have. Look, that's how much fabric it I probably needed maybe a little tiny bit more at the top but I have enough fabric here to do at least one more possibly even two more if I had realized how much fabric I was wasting look I might squeeze in another one or something with all the fabric once I cut it to where it should be um I'm really tempted to try to do a drum with it I've never done a drum. I watched, I've seen Helen D do drums and a couple of hers and I know Vanna has a tutorial. I find Vanna's tutorials hard to follow. No offense to her, but I know I have a couple more people say that have done drums and if I get the nerve and, it's not, and my sewing machine, who knows, I may try it next year to I'm not gonna try it for the end at least before Christmas but we'll see if I can convince myself to do it next year because for something long and skinny like that that would I think the best finish for me I don't see framing it and I don't want to leave it <laughs> although it's been left for I don't know how many years <laughs> at least five or six um, Apparently, Mom said I asked her to iron it for me at one point, and either she ironed it and tucked it away, or <clears throat> tucked it away and didn't iron it. <laughs> I don't know, because I don't remember when I stitched it. Well, that's what I get for not putting the dates on things. <clears throat> and my last thing for today, if, you, if you're still with me, this is probably the longest video I've ever done, is a previous finish um, in honor of the province's first snowfall of the year. Not here, thank goodness, not here, but in central Newfoundland, which is, well, approximately a four to five hour
drive from here, like in the Gander area. They got snow yesterday. I, don't, I think it was only like five to 10 centimeters, uh, less than they were supposed, were thought to have gotten it shifted or whatever but I do know why they got snow and we didn't because land is uh, thanks to grade 10 science land is a poor heat sink and therefore um, the air area around Gander is not near the water so they have colder winters and hotter summers because water is a better heat sink than land Ta -da! I just passed grade 10 in the first test <laughs> in science Aaron, had, Aaron has had three science tests since the start of the year. Unbelievable. Uh, and it's all on the same stuff. Um, but because they had a head snow, I'm going to show you this previous finish. And I wrote down where it was from. It was from Cross Stitch Celebrations. Celebrations. It's a magazine. I know that. And I can look it up if anyone wants to know. But it, uh, I can't, I had it written down on a piece of paper up in my craft room when I left it. But it is what I call, I don't call him Santa Claus, I call him Father Christmas. But here he is. Ooh, I stitched 1995. See, I did put the date on that. And I had it framed, obviously, professionally. And it's been, you know, 11 months in my basement. And for December. I guess well a little less than 11 months because the ember through early January he sits up he's going up upstairs and I'll just bring him down I dare you to find the mistakes because I bet you there's about 75 in there or more but you'd never know it I just love him and He's probably one of my favorite things that I've previously stitched. And there, that's my day. Well, my week, my life, my stitching. <laughs> uh, see you in a couple of weeks.